Welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. Today I'm going to talk to you about a little project that I'm getting ready to do. It's something different than I've done in the past. This one is a little more construction related, but it's for the tractor. So stick around. Welcome to my cluttered garage. You know I'm really glad you're here. Yeah. So we're inside the tractor shed. This is a, a lean-to off the back of my garage. It's like 16 by 24. I built this when I was a teenager. Something just fell on the roof. I built this when I was just a teenager, or just a young, you know, 20 something guy. Uh, anyway, and the one thing I don't have about it, and if you look closely, you'll see, it's got a dirt floor. I just never got around to putting a concrete floor in it. And it was when I got the tractor last year, a couple years ago, I decided to park it in here and I don't like parking it on the dirt floor. So I talked to somebody who does concrete work. They gave me a quote, I'm gonna have them pour the concrete, but there are some other things I wanna change before I get to the concrete. This whole back door opens up and it is really convenient because you get the full height of the lean-to. So you can park something in there that's you know eight feet tall or so. Uh, but the problem I have is that that door you know, is right against the ground. And if you get just a little bit of snow, you've got to shovel all that snow away in order to open the door. So, plus the door is rotten on the bottom. Again, it's 30 years old or so. So, I'm going to take that door off. And in addition to that, I'm going to take the front of the building off. We can go around this way. See all the junk behind the building. back is nice. So here's the front. This is where I started the video out. And it does look cool, doesn't it? It looks like a neat little shed. I was really proud of that because I had built the sliding door. I've got that neat little window back there. But let's take a closer look. So this has held up pretty well through the years. I painted it once or twice and I like the rustic look. But the fact is it's just shiplap pine board and you know when it's close to the ground you start to have rot and whatnot and I just don't want to pour concrete against that on the other side and I was thinking about salvaging it somehow but then I was looking at the window frame and you can see at the top here that's starting to get rotten down here that's starting to rot out too so I think it's time to just rebuild this thing. Of course, it's not the best time for it with the price of lumber, but here's my plan. I'm gonna take this wall down completely. I'm gonna take the front wall down and I'm gonna take the back wall down, which is that door that opens up. What I wanna do is take this wall down, have the concrete poured, and then build a new wall on top of the concrete and put a regular old entry door Maybe a window, if not just a regular old entry door, which won't have the character that this has, but I think it'll be a lot more functional. Now you can see, of course, I keep all my tractors in here. <clears throat> it's very important. And one of the problems I have here is that this dirt floor is obviously the same level as the grass there, as the back lawn. It's actually a little bit lower. so. When it rains, I've got water that just runs in here and it runs along the floor. This is all damp right now. In fact, you'll see where the break is. See, that's dry and that's wet. So this is really not a good place to park equipment. In fact, what I have done, I moved that piece of plywood, but all winter long, I had the plywood back here and the tractor was parked on, on top of the plywood and to at least keep some of that moisture from evaporating up and getting underneath the tractor. Of course, I put that plywood there years ago before it was $100 a sheet, but uh, anyway, sacrificing a piece of plywood. So what my goal here is that I would like to turn this into kind of a workshop, you know, call it a man cave, whatever you want to call it, but I would like a nice workshop. I've got the garage, which happens to be really 
cluttered. We haven't had a car in that garage for years and years, and that's my fault. You know, I've got tools in there, pressure washer, generator, welder, lawnmowers, chainsaws, all that is just taking up space in the garage. So what I'd like to do is convert this to more of a shop with a nice concrete floor, put a workbench in here, organize my tools, keep the tractor in here, maybe get the lawnmower in here too, the riding mower. Uh, I don't know. Ultimately, I would like to build another lean-to off the other side just for the tractor and some of the equipment and make this one more of a workshop. But we'll see what happens there. So for today, what I want to do is take down this wall. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It's a little heartbreaking because I put a lot of work into it. It does look pretty cool. It's a neat background, but it's just not functional and it's not going to last. I mean, again, it's lasted like 30 years. Um, whatever I do now, hopefully will last another 30 years and I'll be a really old man then. So this could be the last time. I've also got the, the hinge door off the back. That should come down really easy. So I'm going to take off both ends and we'll see what we get done tonight. And then you guys can follow along with the project. And uh, when we get the concrete poured, we'll see how that goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this door off and take that barn door track down. And it's funny, I remember buying that track 30 years ago. And at the time thinking, boy, that stuff is really expensive. It's like a 10 foot piece, I guess. And the track and the rollers, they were expensive, but I wanted it to last and wanted it to work. And boy, that door works as well today as it did when I put it up. So I'll take, I'll take that down and maybe I can reuse that track somewhere. So this is a little bit different for me, right? To be doing something more vlog style. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, leave a comment. If you have any questions, put that in the comments as well. I really enjoy talking with you guys in the comments and it's really fun to have that kind of interaction. Of course, we do the Monday night live streams too. A lot of you join us each Monday night at seven Eastern time. And we've done what, 21 live streams now. And I wasn't sure if I'd keep it up, but so far, good number of people keep joining every Monday. So I'll keep it up as long as you keep it up. I'll tell you, one of the best tools that I ever bought was this DeWalt, well, it was a, it was a set that came with a hammer drill and this little impact driver. I didn't think I would use this impact driver. I thought, that's kind of a waste of a tool because I had always used drills for driving screws. You know, you put a screw bit in the drill and it was great. And I thought, what do you need this for if you have a drill? Turns out, this little guy, a little 20 volt impact, this is my go-to tool. I mean, I, I swear I use this thing, it seems like every day, there's always a use for it. So this is like, gosh, seven, seven years old now probably. Came with two, three amp hour batteries and they still work. I'm waiting for these to die any, any day now, but uh, the lights on this one, the little charge indicator lights don't work. So oh, that's because that one's dead, but they don't work. The other one, the charge indicator lights do work, but uh, so this one, the battery works, but the lights don't. Anyway, this little guy, I can't love it enough. And I have these little impact nut drivers, so that's how I'm going to take that rail down. So the biggest impact nut driver that I had was half inch. Turns out. I used lags with a uh, 916 head, so I've got to use that to uh, take the bolts off. But I have this 3 8 adapter, which is nice. Uh, you can see that. And then you can put your extension or your 3 8 sockets right on there. So that's kind of handy.
One thing I did differently than a lot of people do is I, I mounted that door on the inside of the building instead of the outside. If you mount it on the outside, I think you have to put some kind of rain shield or something over it, which I didn't have. And so worked out well to put it on the inside. Okay, I'm okay. That little door's heavy. You know what I really love about this little impact is this little holster clip. You just stick it on the in your pocket or on your belt, and I use that so much too. I mean, just so many times you need to set it down and, and you just drop it in your pocket or drop it on your belt, and it's really just brilliant. I'm not trying to push this thing. I mean, I just love it that much. And you know, I do have an Amazon affiliate link, and if you want to click on that, I'll put that in the description, but by no means am I you know, trying to sell this, but uh, I do love it. So I would recommend one of these or some other brand, whatever it is, uh, you should pick one up if you don't have one because you will use it all the time. Can I reach it without a ladder? I can. still wired on the inside. Now I'll admit that I don't tend to be the neatest worker or the most organized, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate organization. And sometimes I get it right. Like I put this box together, this has all my electrical tools in it. And anytime I need anything electrical, I know right where to go. I've got my screwdriver, which is really designed for electrical work. I've got my lineman's pliers in here. And uh, this is really another one of my favorite tools. This is a voltage, uh, what do you call it? A checker? Checker router? Anyway, show you how it works. So this little tool just senses line voltage. So you turn it on, you touch it to the wire, and if there's no power, it stays green. Now if I switch this switch on, that wire's hot. The other wire's hot because that's the light switches for inside the shed. The other switch here was for that outside light. So, it's fantastic. And all you do is touch it to the sheathing of the wire. It gives you a good reading. Love it. Now that was just a demonstration. Of course you want to kill the power at the panel to ensure that you have no power possibly coming to the box. I just like to throw the wire nuts back on the hot wires in case it gets turned back on by mistake. Pull these staples out. And I'm just gonna cut this wire off the light here. There's the light. This was an old recycled light 30 years ago. Look at that. There's that spare house key that I hid 30 years ago. Hmm. Well, Johnny Cash built his Cadillac one piece at a time, so I'm going to take down my wall one piece at a time. How about a little time lapse music montage?
that, my friends, is how you do it. Well, it's how I do it anyway. And I even saved this hosta. I mean, that's a big one. Look at the size of that thing. If that plant could talk, it would say, hasta la vista, Wally. -E. That's gonna do it for tonight. I got some cleanup to do. You gonna wanna watch that. But uh, come back next time and we'll take that door down. Maybe I'll do that off camera, I don't know. The big thing is gonna be when I get Jamie here to pour the floor and he wants to come by in the next week or so to check this out and do it again. What I'm gonna do is have him pour it above ground level. I don't know how, if we have to add stone or anything, but I'd like to have it a little step up just to keep that water from coming in the building. So that's gonna do it for today. I wanna to thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I invite you to do so. If you like the video, click that thumbs up. And if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notification when I put out my next video. So thanks again for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next time.